<laughs> I don't know what they say. <laughs> you know, yesterday we talked a little bit about the three principles and what they really mean. And maybe we could cover that today again in a different way. Because these three principles are the most important thing in this world. There is nothing in this world more important. They hold the secret to all psychology, psychiatry, all human behavior. And the most important thing to remember is it's not what you think. It's the fact that you think. And thought holds the secret to all our happiness, all our sadness. And once you realize the power of thought, I guarantee your life will never be the same again. And someday, hopefully, throughout the world, the therapist will someday recognize this, the true nature of thought. Not how we use thought, but the true nature of thought. There lies the secret. It, it's a secret that can never be told because it's a deeper dimension of thought than we use today in therapy. You've got to go a deeper dimension before form. You know how yesterday I talked about before form and after form? Because before form is the spiritual. After form is the physical. And to find this such a secret, you have to ignore the form and go before it. Go to the spiritual part of life. And if you can find the secret of thought and your patients hear it, they will realize that all their behavior, whether good or bad, derives from the way they think. We are thinking creatures in this world of form trying to find our way home again from whence we came. And this is where we all came from, from a spiritual nothingness. This is the great nothingness the sages spoke about. And if you can realize that, what this great nothingness really means, then you'll find your happiness. You'll find your mental health. It's a matter of evolution. What we were told in the medical field a thousand years ago is of no value now. But at that time, it was a reality. What we have now in the psychological field is a reality. But there is always greater realities. And if you keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find that reality. And there's only one way, one place that you can find it, is in here. Not here. This is the intellect. This is after the form. Go before the form, step inside, deepen your soul, and there lies the answer. Because soul is pure consciousness. And when you come into this reality as a child, as a baby, newly born, you don't know anything. You're a virgin mind. You take this virgin mind, you come into this reality, the second you come into the physical reality, you get lost because you walk into a divine illusion and you get lost in this divine illusion. 
And what keeps you here is something called your free will. And from this free will, in the three principles, you see life as a form. And what you have to do, again, I tell you, you have to step inside before the form to the formless. And here lies the secret you're looking for. The sages, the wise people from the beginning of time have always told you, look inside for the answer. Another way to say the same thing is look within. There's two words meaning the same thing. Ignore the words. Totally ignore what I'm saying. Now, the first time I ever said that to an audience, they said, well, what's the sense of listening? <laughs> but you listen to another dimension of thought. You step inside. And when you find this, what you're looking for, when you find this inner wisdom, what happens is, it's purity of thought. That's what wisdom is. And you take this purity of thought, then you see a different world. That's why when a human being has a true insight, a true revelation, from then on, the world will never, never, never be the same again. Because once your consciousness rises, you will never go back to where you were before, because you know better. Now, I know some of you people will say, you know, I've lost it. I was happy for two weeks, and I've totally lost it. <laughs> you haven't lost it. Again, you brought your own intellect into it, and it's been temporarily lost. But if you can see the lostness is created from the raw usage of your mind, your consciousness, and your thought. You'll go back to where you started, and you'll find that happiness again. So don't be afraid if you go down levels of understanding, levels of consciousness, or a mood change. Saying the same thing. Different words. Ignore my words. You pick whichever word you want. And if you're listening to me, and you say, well, maybe Sid should say this word, you say it to yourself. Because that's your guide, whatever you think. Nobody can tell you how to think. Nobody can tell you how to behave. I can tell you how I behave and how I think, but then you have your free will. And you must see life the way you want. And the free will is one of the greatest gifts of all. And nobody but nobody can take it away from you. They can make you a prisoner. They can put you in jail. You can live in a country that you're not allowed to think out loud. But in reality, nobody can take it away from you. Because deep inside, you have your own ideas, your own concepts of what life is, and that's the way it should be. When a person gets lost, and they're sad, and they're lonely, and they see life in a negative way, and they come to you people for help, if you can explain to them the power of their own thoughts, this will take them out of it, and they'll find their happiness. And once they do this, they look back, and they'll wonder why they ever thought that way, because they've found a new life. And I know there's a lot of people in here that have been in that position and they found a new life. 
a life they never even knew existed. Like I found a life that I never knew existed. And people will tell you, well, you've got to keep coming back to me for at least 10 years <laughs> before you're okay. Don't believe that. If you believe that, do you know what happens? You'll wait 10 years. <laughs> and after the 10 years is finished, you'll think, well, I should be happy now. The 10 years is up. <laughs> but that doesn't work that way. Because when you find truth, it's instant. It lies inside, and it only takes one original thought to bring this mental health out. So how long does it take to find mental health? One second, if you can find the original thought. What I found, I found in a couple of seconds. And that's why I know that everybody on this earth, literally everybody, no matter who you are, what you are, the condition, mental health, is only one thought away. Now, this is a new concept for the world. But it really isn't. Because from the beginning of time, the sages and the wise have told you the same thing. And it's always been like this. And it will always be like this, as long as there's a human being walking the face of the earth. Because it's through mind, consciousness, and thought that you see reality. This reality is born through your thoughts. If you didn't have a thought, this reality wouldn't exist. If you didn't have a consciousness, this reality wouldn't exist. If you didn't have a mind, this reality wouldn't exist. Because mind, consciousness, and thought are the three principles that create whatever you see in this existence. It creates reality. And when you pass from this world to the next world, we call it death. You'll all have this proven to you. Because I can guarantee you this. When anybody passes from this world to the next world, they will find the secret to life. Guaranteed. I know when I had this experience, I know I went through the process of death. Do you know how it says in some writings, you've got to die to live? And it's true. You ever hear of people having a near-death experience? They always say it's spiritual, and they're never the same again. Well, I was blessed. I know I was. And I went through, totally through the experience of death. And this is why I can tell you, there is nothing to worry about in death. Because you go home. You go home to where you belong. You go home to what you call God. And God is the energy of all things, whether in form or formless. This is where the great oneness takes place, because the form and the formless are one, because they're all the same energy in a different disguise. Or another way to say it, they're all the same energy, only in a different form. They're the same state of consciousness in a different form. Because that's what life is. It's a ball of consciousness. Nothing else but pure consciousness. It's God consciousness. 
And if you ever find out the true meaning of what I'm saying right now, you'll find out the true meaning of mind. And mind is everything in this world, again, whether in form or formless. I'm going to keep talking about form and formless. This is a great oneness. This is why there can only be one God. Because both are the same thing in a different disguise. A very important thing about thought, and here's the simple part. We all have thoughts come into your head. And thoughts come into your head so fast you can't stop them. I don't care who it is. You could just have a thought, a split second. You could have a dozen thoughts in a split second. But the, the beauty is when you find out you don't have to react to a thought. A thought on its own is totally neutral. And if you don't put any power into that thought, it will do you no harm or anybody else any harm. It's only when you decide to put thought into it. Like a prisoner said to me in jail, you know, said, I used to have thoughts come into my head. And he says, I figured I had to go with that thought because it was my thought. And he never realized you could ignore it. Now, I bet you every one of you here have had negative thoughts a thousand times that you've never acted on. It doesn't do any harm. It's only when you put life into that thought. Now, if you have a positive thought and you put life into it, that's what happens. Positivity happens. And you start to live in a positive life. You take a thought, a negative thought, put life into it, you'll live a negative life. It's all thought. This chair would not be here if we didn't have a thought. I wouldn't be here without a thought. You wouldn't be here without a thought. Thought is a divine gift that we use to go through life. It guides us through life. And you want a good guide? You look for positive thoughts. I know one doctor said to me, you know, said, I spent 20 odd years learning my profession. And all I was taught was mental sickness. And I never had one day of tuition of mental health. Then suddenly, he himself sees the power of thought. And he found his mental health, not in school, not in a university, but he found it inside. It lies within you. And if you can see that, and you can, it comes with a feeling. Look for a feeling. Never mind the talk. And if you can get that aloha feeling in you, that feeling of love, that feeling of understanding, and you give that aloha feeling away, you give it. You give it. You give them a, the, the very essence of life by giving them love and understanding. And when you do that, they feel good, and when you walk away, you feel good. And when you realize this, you can stand with pride and say, I know my profession well. I know how to help people. I know I can cure people who are suffering. And a lot of you people have said that all the years you practiced, you had no results until you realized 
the true meaning or the true nature of thought. And it's that simple. And people will say to me, Thid, it's too simple. You're insulting my intelligence by telling me this. Then I'll turn around to them and say, well, what did I just say to you? And they'll say, well, I really don't know. <laughs> Look for simplicity. Because in simplicity lies the secret to all complexity. You know when you go into school and there's a big complex question comes up and it's very complex and it may be take you two years to try and figure it out but once you figure it out it's simple then you become a professor then you turn around to your student and say, I'm going to tell you something very simple. But to them, it's not simple. But because you found it, it's simple to you. It's simple after the fact, after you've learned it. But before you learn it, it's very complex. And that's what I'm saying to you now. The mind is simplicity. The secret lies in thought. And I know most of you have told me that in your entire life you were never taught about thought. And maybe someday the field will notice this and realize it as a fact. Then from then on they will be taught about mind consciousness and thought. And this will create a new therapy, a new psychology, a new psychiatry that the world has never known before. Mm -hmm.